Hey guys, this is Steve Losh, and I'm going to do a quick demo of my Minecraft framework, uh, sorry, my framework for writing Minecraft bots in Clojure, called ClojureCraft. Um, this video is not going to be a tutorial on how to program in Clojure. Uh, if you want to learn that, go to learn-clojure.com, and they have links to pretty much everything you'll need to get started. So, anyway, um, let's get right into it. ClojureCraft is on both Bitbucket and GitHub, so if you like Git or Mercurial, you can just pick one. Um, I'll be eventually taking pull requests on either one, doesn't matter. Uh, the documentation is linked on both, it's at readthedocs.org. And like it says, uh, ClojureCraft is definitely not ready for actual use. Um, I just want to do a quick demo so you can see what I've been doing and what I've been up to these past week, couple of weeks. So there's a quick start guide. So first what we're going to do is grab the code. So I'm going to open a terminal. And I'm just going to go on my desktop, put it on my desktop for now. Um, oh, I already have an old version from the last time I attempted to do this screencast. Okay. So we're going to clone down the repo. Okay. We're going to cd inside. And we need to run uh, line depths to use line again to pull down the dep dependencies. Right now it's just closure and closure contrib, uh, but that could change in the future. And um, we're also going to fire up a REPL once it's done. Okay, it's done. So while the REPL's firing, I'm going to open a new terminal window. And I'm going to run the bootstrap script, which will grab the vanilla server from Mojang's site. Uh, sorry, desktop. Closure graft. Um, I'm going to run the bootstrap script. It'll just wget this Minecraft server.jar. And then there's a nice little handy script for just running the server. Right. Now you can see the first time it runs the server, uh, it's going to generate a world for you. Uh, it won't take this long in the future, but the first time it will. And you can also see that the server is in offline mode right now, so it doesn't try to authenticate usernames and passwords with Mojang's server. Eventually, ClojureCraft will support that, but for right now, I haven't gotten that far into implementing the authentication protocol. So for right now, you can use just any username you want, and it won't check if you're legit. So while we're waiting for that, we're going to go back to our REPL and pull in a couple of libraries from ClojureCraft itself. We're going to pull in ClojureCraft.core, and we're just going to call it CC for less typing, uh, actions as act, and events as ES for events. So let's just do that, and it'll take a second. Um, there's a bunch of code that it needs to compile. And once that's done, we're going to create a bot. So basically we create a var, def bot, and we call closurecraft.core connect to actually connect to the server. Um, and to do that, you need to give it a, um, a an IP and a port. Uh, and there's a handy little mapping already for you in closurecraft.core if you just want to connect to localhost at the default port, which is what we're going to do. And then you can also pass a username. Uh, like I said, it doesn't check usernames right now, um, so we can pick anything we want. Uh, you can also just pass nil instead of a string, and it'll just give you a random set of letters as a username. Okay, but we're going to pick a username. We're going to call our bot Timmy. Okay, and it prints little debug data. And here you'll see it's uh, printing a bunch of time macro output. Uh, this Each of these is a chunk that the server is sending to our bot. And I've just been doing this to try to time how long it takes to parse a chunk. And you can see right now it takes anywhere up to usually around 150 milliseconds, which is obviously too much. Um, I have a couple of ideas for getting that timing down. Uh, maybe I'll add some type hints somewhere, or I've, I've kind of been thinking that it might be a good idea to force, or I'm sorry, delay and force chunks. So instead of parsing the compressed data that the server sends us, I might uh, just delay that with a delay macro and then force it wherever I need it. Because the server sends around 300 to 400 chunks, it seems, as soon as you log in. And I doubt that most bots, right off the bat, will need all 300 or 400 of those chunks, right? It, um, I'm thinking that you'll only probably, you know, care about 20 or 30 that are um, around your bot, at least to begin with. So we could get a lot of, uh, of CPU savings by delaying those until they're actually necessary. And not parsing them when we read the packets. So anyway, um, I'm going to start up a vanilla Minecraft client so that I can look at our bot. So I'm going to log in and get the splash screen, connect to localhost, just run on our local computer. And there we go. There's our bot. He's already in the world, standing on the ground. Um, 
Now, I usually wait until the chunks are done parsing to actually start doing anything. Uh, you can do stuff before that, but it's laggy and it's hard. It's much better to just wait until they're done. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try to find a couple ways to reduce the time it takes to load those chunks. So I'm just going to wait until those chunks are pretty much finished. Uh, looks like they're getting there. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to move this window over here. Um, I'm also going to opt myself so that I can destroy blocks around the spawn area. Um, I'm just going to opt myself, not the bot. Um, let me get that there. Back here, okay. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the quick start guide. Um, we can perform two different types of actions right now with our bot. We can move the bot, and we can tell the bot to jump. Right? Um, we're going to move the bot as our first action once the chunks are done parsing. Uh, and so right now you can only move in the X and Z axes. Uh, you can't move in Y. That's what jumping is for, moving up and down. Uh, but you can move you know, X and Z, and it'll handle gravity and everything for you. Um, geez, it's taken a long time to parse those, uh, parse those chunks. Uh, usually it doesn't take this long. I think because I'm recording a screencast at the same time. Hello, Piggy. Sorry, you're, you're in our way, Piggy. I'm sorry, sorry about this, but oh jeez, it's yeah, it's it's lagging a little bit, and it's taking longer to parse the chunks because I'm recording a screencast at the same time, uh, so my computer's kind of not liking that very much. Sorry about that, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so you can only move in the x and the z axis, but uh, gravity is taken care of for you. So if you move off the edge of a cliff, it, your bot will fall like they should. Uh, looks like we're pretty much done with the chunks here. Okay, um, so. I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, force. I'll explain why you need to force these actions in a minute, but just for right now, trust me on it. So force, act, move, and you're going to pass the bot to the action. And let's say move one in the x direction, zero in the y, and one in the y, or z direction. Sorry. Okay, so let me just let me just pull up the, uh, the client so we can watch this happening. Okay, there's our, there's our little bot, Timmy. Ah. Sorry. And we're going to run the action. Timmy moves. And you can see that gravity does actually work. So if I break a block from beneath the bot, the bot falls. Um, it works with falling sand and everything like that. So it should be good. Um, let's take a look at our other option, or our other action right now that we have implemented is jump. And jump doesn't take any arguments except the bot. So we just say jump. And you can see, it jumped. I'll jump a couple more times. Um, and if you try to jump too often, uh, you're not going to hurt anything. It's just, oh, <laughs> it's just a little bit buggy right now. Uh, I'll be working on that. But anyway, so uh, the last thing I want to do in this screencast is show you event handlers, which is the main way you'll actually be probably interacting with your bot when you're writing real life bots um, once I get a little bit more fleshed out. So, um,. There's a section called Creating and Registering Event Handlers, and events. so if we go there in the documentation, um, you'll get, you know, you can read this at your leisure. Uh, basically, the general idea is that you create functions to handle events that you get sent. Um, and event handling functions are pure functions. Uh, let me turn down the volume a little bit so that the cows don't disturb us. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, event handling functions are pure functions, so they are... Um, they're going to take the bot as an argument, and then a number of arguments depending on which, uh, which handler you're implementing. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little event handler that whenever someone chats in the game, so if you say hello, um, we want our bot to jump in the air. Okay? So we're going to call it, sorry, defin, jump on chat. Okay? And like I said, it's going to take the bot as its first argument, like all event handlers. Oh, I'm getting some more chunks. Um, and so chat handlers take the message as an argument, and that's it. Um, so the message is going to be the actual text that gets sent back. Okay? So um, we're not going to really worry about the text that gets sent. We don't really care. We're just going to jump whenever anybody says anything. Um, the bot's going to be very excited. Uh, so event handlers have to return a list. I'm sorry, a vector. Um, I'm still thinking in Python. They return a vector of actions. So act, jump, bot. Um, and like I said before, when we were when we were trying to get the bot to jump immediately, we had to force this. Act jump actually returns a delay object or uh, something created with the delay macro, um, so that you can return multiple here. 
And then if this needs to be retried in a transaction, it can do it without breaking anything. Um, this is a pure function, right? It takes in input, puts out output, but doesn't change anything, doesn't mutate anything. Um, so you can unit test them, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. So we're going to do that. We're going to say jump on chat, define that function. Okay, so jump on chat is defined in our user namespace, right? Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to call the add handler method in the events. Uh, closurecraft.events namespace, um, which we imported as es, just for ease of typing. So es slash add handler, and that's going to take the bot, the event type, which in this case is chat, we want to handle chat messages, and then it's going to take a fully quoted symbol that describes our function, right? Um, and the reason for this is it doesn't just take the function object because then in order to update that function, if you were trying to, you know, mess around with this in the REPL, you would have to clear the event handler and then add the new function. This way, it just takes the jump on chat, so if we redefine that in our current namespace, uh, it'll instantly take effect in the bot without having to do any extra stuff. So, we're going to add that as a handler. And then, let me get the client showing again. Um, and now we have that, and I'm going to say, Hello, sir. And our bot's going to jump. Dance. So you can see that uh, event handlers work. Um, obviously, that once I get some more actions and events implemented, you'll be able to do some really cool stuff with this. Maybe you want um, some. I asked for suggestions on Twitter, and some of the ones I got were really cool, like a bot that stood at the bottom of a mob spawner and automatically sorted different uh, items that it picked up into different chests for you. Um, stuff, uh, events, sorry, bots to, uh, you know, guard your home from griefers. Um, an idea I had was to create a swarm of bots that would just strip an entire world down to the bedrock. Um, there's just a lot of cool things you can do. Um, and because it's completely vanilla, I've actually implemented the entire client protocol except for authentication right now. Um, this will work with any vanilla Minecraft server. You don't need any mods, anything like that. So, you know, you can be playing on your regular vanilla multiplayer server, um, when you get tired, want to go to bed for the night, you, uh, you know, you turn off your Minecraft client and then you switch on your bot and your bot can gather materials, can guard your, uh, your house against griefers, stuff like that. So I think it's got a lot of potential. Uh, there's still a lot of work I need to do, uh, but I think, I think it's going pretty well. So, uh, if you want to leave a comment, let me know if you have any questions, um, I'd love to, uh, to answer or suggestions especially would be awesome too. Um, and I'll try to do another screencast if you guys are interested, uh, with a, once I get a little bit more implemented. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, again, you can go to uh, github.com slash sjl slash closurecraft or bitbucket.org slash sjl slash closurecraft to get to the actual code. And the link to the documentation is right on there. So, alright. Thanks again, guys.